If you were the manager of a small business and you paid your workers every Friday, would you follow the same route at the same time every week when you took the money back? Do you think it's a good idea to stick to a pattern? The police can't usually get there in time to stop the criminals getting away. To have any chance of catching them, the police have to find out who they are. And to do that, detectives must collect information at the scene of the crime. First, they talk to eyewitnesses. Out here, I'll show you what happened. But how reliable are eyewitnesses? It was out here. The car came out. You saw the crime. You're an eyewitness. What can you remember about the car? The wall over there. What about the criminals? And their clothes? Straight up. Straight up. Never stopped. And what else can you remember that might help catch the criminals? If you watch carefully, you'll see that it's a light green saloon car, registration number VDB-526S. One criminal's wearing grey trousers and a red jumper. The driver's wearing a red jacket, and they both have stocking masks. But it's very hard to be a good witness if you don't have an action replay. So if they can't rely on witnesses, what information can the detectives get? What clues do you think the criminals might have left at the scene of crime? What sort of objective evidence might help the detectives? Eyewitnesses can only tell you what they remember. This is subjective. It can't be proved. What scientists need is hard, objective evidence. Collecting clues for the scientists is the job of the scenes of crime officer, known in the trade as Socko. When the scenes of crime officer arrives, the detectives explain what they think happened, what sort of clues there might be, and where. Using clues to try and solve a crime is a logical process, like the scientific method. The first stage of the scientific method is to make observations and gather information. The second stage is to sort it out into patterns and think about what might be important.
Why do you think this cardboard might be important? And why is he putting it in a polythene bag? The third stage of the scientific method is to form a theory, to guess what's happened. What do you guess he's found here? And how will this red plastic help catch the criminals? The fourth stage is to test the theory by experiment. Are these bits of paint? An eyewitness said the car bashed into the bricks. Some paint might have been scraped off. The scenes of crime officer carefully collects a sample, wraps it up, labels it, and sends it off to be tested at the Forensic Science Laboratory. Most of the work of forensic scientists is about matching things to try and identify them. First, she has to pick out the paint from the dirt. Then she mounts a single flake of paint in black plasticine. What she'd like to do is find out what sort of car it was by matching the colour of each layer of paint against the car maker's charts. How would you sort out paint colours? And what different ways are there of sorting things out? Before you sort anything into groups, you have to decide what groups to use. Oh, animals. Animals. Is that animal or is it a human? That's a human, I think. Human. Human. What is it? Type. Is that a sight? Human. That's a nice sight. Faces. Ships. Human. Do you think that one is? Ships. What about these? Type. There are lots of different ways of grouping these postcards. You might start by dividing them into two groups, animals and people on the left, and places on the right. What smaller groups would you choose? Suppose you had to go to a new school. How could you find out the names of the other people in your class? One way is to use a key. A key looks just like a trick. Let's use this key to find out who this is. First, he's a boy, so we go right. He wears specs, so we go left. He has a moustache, so we go left again. And if the trick works, it should be Amma. The trick is not in using the key, but in making it. To make a key, you have to sort things into groups. Take away the boys. How can you tell the girls apart? Debbie has fair hair. Angie has no parting. That leaves only Shanaz. What about the boys? Gareth doesn't wear specs. And Shaukat has no moustache which leaves Amma. Now, let's see if it works. Shaukat. Angie. Gareth. Shanaz. Amma. Debbie. But how big a key would you need to sort out all the people in your class? To find the exact color of the top coat of paint, the forensic scientist matches it directly against standard color charts. Once they know the exact color of the car, 
the police have a better chance of finding it. In this case, it's already been found abandoned. The police quickly check to see where it comes from and whether it's been stolen. Could I have a 1017, please? It's Victor Delta Bravo 526 Sierra. Why do you think this broken tail light might be useful? Even if they hadn't found the car, the broken pieces picked up at the scene of crime could help track down the make and model. But now the forensic scientists can find out for certain whether that car was at the scene of the crime. To provide proof, they look for a physical fit, like a jigsaw. So they know this car was at the scene of crime. What other evidence might they find in it to help catch the criminals? On the passenger seat, red fibers picked up with sellotape may help to show who's been in the car. They go straight off for analysis at the Forensic Science Laboratory. What do you think you could tell about fibres by using a microscope? What different ways can you think of to sort them out? What else would you do with them if a suspect was arrested by the police? And if you were the scenes of crime officer, are there any other clues you would look for? The scenes of crime officer's case contains everything he needs for fingerprinting. the scene of crime, where would you look for fingerprints? What sort of surfaces do you think are best? What patterns would you look for? And how would you preserve the prints you found? How could you tell whether these prints were made by the criminal or by the people who work here? Before they could begin to identify fingerprints, they had to sort them into groups. The patterns are made by the ridges in your skin, arches, loops, which are by far the most common of the three main groups, and whirls. Of the whole population, 5% have arches, 65% loops, and 30% whirls. The experts divide these into many smaller groups so that they can quickly look for matching patterns in their files. When prints are found at the scene of crime, they're photographed and compared with the prints of known criminals. Any prints could be identified in this way if everyone in the country had their fingerprints taken. Do you think that would be a good idea? What do you think he's looking for?
When he thinks he's found a match, he looks for detailed points of comparison. The jury will need to be convinced that a careful scientific eye has been used to match the prints. To go to court, he needs to find 16 points that match between the prints on file and the ones found on the door. Morning, fingerprint department. Got an identification for you. Once the prints have been identified, the police have a prime suspect and his last known address. Now the police have a suspect, the scientists can find out whether the fibers from his jumper match those found in the car. And they can get hold of his shoes. What do you think he's doing this for? How many points of similarity do you think you could find between this print and the one found on the cardboard at the scene of the crime? And why do you think the holes in the pattern are more important than the pattern itself? So, let's take a logical look at the evidence. The eyewitness remembered the color of the car, and that was confirmed by the paint sample found at the scene of the crime. The fibers show that the suspect had been in the car and the broken tail light proves the car had been at the scene of the crime. Do you think this proves the suspect was there? The fingerprint proves he was at the scene of crime and the exact matching of the footprint confirms it. But suppose he claims he went there on legitimate business. Do you guess that the evidence will be enough to convince a jury that he committed the crime? And how would you try to find the other man? Ooh.